Today, we're looking at a pink ink from Graf von Faber-Castell, Electric Pink. It also marks the using up of the Rhodia dot pads that I've been using to take notes, where I used five of them to get through and started my year two on it. Let's see what notebook we start using tomorrow. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. There's timestamps down below so that if you are only interested in certain parts, you can skip around. But if you've got the time, please check out the entire video. Also, you can follow me over on Instagram. And if you like fountain pen ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this italics chaplain's tankard with an oblique italic nib to write for the day and to take my notes for this video. This first writing sample is done on a standardized set of paper of Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia. There are additional writing samples later in the video. Now, let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form, and to make sure I keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine which is coming loose. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, no shade, great tone of pink here. The extra fine is a noticeably lighter tone than the stub with no feather, spread, halo sheen, and it still does give us shading. Now I don't see a lot of shading with pinks because I don't see a lot with reds. The K is much darker than the rest of Quick and the downstroke of the Q is much darker. Brown starts dark and works its way lighter. Fox starts dark, gets light, gets dark again. Over starts very light and gets very dark. Very nice. And even the lighter parts are easy to read. Eight seconds to dry. Now the medium is a little darker than the extra fine, not quite as dark as the stub. No feather, spread, halo, sheen, a very nice shading throughout. Quick starts dark, gets to a mid-tone, a very dark, light tone, dark tone again. Brown starts dark and works its way light. Fox starts dark, gets light, gets dark again. Beautiful, and 11 seconds to dry. Now the scrubby of the extra fine, you look far left to far right, and you can see some of the color variation, and we did get some. Scrubby of the medium shows us a lot, and we got a lot. Tomoy River. No bleeding, normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, or shade. 16 seconds to dry. The medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub, with no feather, spread, halo sheen or shade, 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us plenty of, or sorry, show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it. Looking at my notes and looked at the wrong thing real quick. Rhodia, no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading in the stub. Now the extra fine is uh, quite a bit lighter than the stub. It has no feather, spread, halo sheen. It does offer some really good shade spots. Again, the left side of the Q is much darker as it works its way, and then the K becomes very dark again. Brown starts very dark and gets very light. Fox starts very light and gets very dark. Over, light to dark. Nice, lazy, dark to light, really good stuff. 10 seconds to dry. Medium, same tone as the extra fine, with no feather, spread, halo sheen, and the shade shows up even better. Quick starts very dark, gets very light and very, very dark. Brown starts dark and gets light. The starts light and gets dark. Nice stuff. Lazy starts dark, gets lighter at the A, dark at the Z, Y again. Super. 14 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both the extra fine and the medium shows plenty of color variation. Now the medium shows us even more than the extra fine, which is the way that it came out to us in the writing sample. I agree with Vita. I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it into water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this is just a pink dye. There's nothing mixed in here. It 
starts light where the water is and works its way darker as it moves up. Now the one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water and it does seem to seep in at a line a little bit more. It's slower moving up trying to bond with the filter paper but not quite really doing it. Not expecting a ton of resistance for this ink. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page and more importantly how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I am shocked at how well it did based on the chromatography. The, it went from about an extra fine to a fine, but other than that was unaffected by being highlighted, making me feel good using this in a note-taking situation. And that pink looks really good with that yellow behind it. Now water, I expected more out of it. Water is starting to lift some of the ink off the paper, but it is not removing it in the way that I expected. Pen flush, you do start to see white of the paper coming through. Without a doubt, given more time, pen flush is all that you would really need to get this out of your pen. But if for some reason you wanted to go with the one third bleach solution, it is completely removing it and leaving this weird tan discoloration. But that I think is more from the ink and the paper towel than the paper. But Pen flush is all you should need to get this out of your pen. I test viscosity or flow with a tilt test that I'll link the video on how I do that. Now for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Graph von Faber-Castell's electric pink has a viscosity of 1.54, making this a very, very wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper. I average all of those. Now, for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Graf von Faber-Castell's Electric Pink has an average dry time of 13 seconds, so despite it being so incredibly wet, it became normal in dry time. Nice. Instead of finding inks that look like Graf von Faber-Castell's Electric Pink, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice purple with this very vivid pink. I chose Birmingham Pen Company's Allegheny River Twilight. The second writing sample is done on yellow rhodia, white lines, and Strathmore writing paper. Here we have the yellow rhodia paper, and I really like to just see what kind of change it makes to tones. Now, I wasn't sure what to really expect in how yellow might affect the pink, if it would make it more red, or lean a little magenta tone. And do you know what it did? Nothing. This is a very opaque ink. You really, there's no change in the tone of this pink for being on yellow paper. It's very nice, very strong color without being overpowering. Now White Lines paper, which is not done well with fountain pen ink, but then strangely I say that over and over and I keep finding inks that do well on it. No bleeding, no ghosting. You get to use the back of this cheaper paper, or cheaper produced, not cheap to buy. The 1.1 stub has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shading. Now the extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, three seconds to dry. The medium is quite a bit darker than the extra fine, just a little bit lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, four seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it, but we got another ink that works on that paper. Now this is Strathmore calligraphy paper. No bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen or shade, four seconds to dry. The medium is darker than the fine, but not as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, six seconds to dry. 
The Scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and we didn't get it and that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Faber-Castell's Electric Pink? Now pink is a difficult color to get right. Sometimes it's too light, sometimes it's screaming and hurts your eyes. But this one is done right. It doesn't hurt your eyes, it's not screaming on the page, and it's not too light. A great alternative to red. I like this. So what pen and nib will give you the best writing experience with this ink? I think a wet fine keeps it dark enough to easily read and still have that little bit of something on the page. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching.